And the reason this is so great is because when I walk in with this, people go, wow, she must be top, you know what? So it already establishes that I'm a pretty good sculptor at what I do before I even open my mouth because I've got this seriously cool professional box. And then as you pointed out, the, it's got plates on it. So it's got my name on it. So someone can't walk off with it. And then it labels everything here in a really nice way. You've got so many tools there. Why, why so many? Well, I tend to, these are the ones that I use to sculpt wax and clay. So basically when I come across one, I'll pick it up. Like it, it just has a neat thing. This one works It's yeah. a mirror, but it's a flexi mirror. Huh. So you guys have had seen these mirrors in your mouths a lot of times yeah. from dentists. What would this you one has that? a flexi. Well, I can make it curve around. So like yeah. if I want to see the back of a sculpture, let's take stitch for example. Okay. If we have stitch down here and you're the sculptor, then I can bend it ah. to see the back. Okay. If I want to see how it relates. And so you don't have to move him. Don't have to move him. And he's small. He's just to demonstrate. But if you have something right. really big or a little tight yeah. corridor, you can kind of slip that in between and then curve it. Yeah. And it works really well. Most of these I did not buy. I got from my dentist. From your dentist? Yeah. You go to a dentist and you say, hey, any tool you don't want. And yeah. he gives me envelope folds. Right. And then he has the right to say, yeah. uh, my tools go to a sculptor. Right. So. Do you ever carry this thing out of the studio? Yes, this was at my Imagineering desk. Ah. Okay, so Imagineering gave me a huge toolbox to pick as many tools as I wanted to. Yeah. But every sculptor who is one that works professionally has a toolkit that is their own that they take from job to job to job to job. You have it ready. So I have a sewing kit if I'm doing costuming for a company. I have a sculpting. This is my sculpting box. Um, these other ones are all different. This is a. These are rake tools that either I've made or someone else has. This is for textures. This is can be texture, but also can work your clay to break it down if you have clay pieces that have a bump. Yeah. So let's say you have something big that you're sculpting. Um, perhaps you're sculpting something that's big like this, but you want these corners to be round. This is going to break it down in increments yeah. to get that curve, and then you can use alcohol and smoothing tools to smooth it. It's like sanding paper, except for we're using these little rakes. These little rakes work great to look at. Is, is there a competition among Imagineers to like be the coolest kid on the block? No. With that's the... what I love about Imagineering, is I think we're all the coolest kid on the block. So we collaborate, and that's one of the things I love about places like Imagineering is that when somebody is solid in who they are and what they do and their craft, they don't have to worry about the next guy or the next guy because we all realize that I'm going to sculpt like me, you're going to sculpt like you, they're going to sculpt like them, so why would you compete? That's a waste of time and energy. Just get her done, whatever you're going to do. And we help each other. So you say, wow, I'm having a little trouble getting whatever, this this particular shape, yeah. could you give me some suggestions or is there a tool you would use? And, and they come up with, they're, they're very, very generous. Is there any uh, gift giving that you've given to other Imagineers that would be as cool as this box? No, I've never done anything that big. I don't have it big, but I will say there was an Imagineer who was responsible for my collectibles that you see. He got me on the map and got my name attached to them. That would be Tony Baxter. And so for Tony, I, did a display, which I've never done for anyone else really, uh, which was the clay version of the piece, the wax version of the piece, and then the final version of the piece, and then a certificate that talked about the phases. Yeah, so I have her clay I gave him, I have her wax, and then the final piece which you saw in the case. So uh, why, are you, why are you doing a Patreon? Why are you doing a Tribe? I'm doing a tribe because people need to have frank, good, honest inspiration and frank, good, like no sugarcoating. So I want to be able not to sugarcoat. I want to be able to just tell you straight what I'm thinking and help you be successful at whatever you need. Or if you're feeling bad, I want you to be in a place that's safe so that if you want to cry or you want to be sad or... I was just an event where I really felt that the group had my back and some metamorphic changes happened to me that I'll never forget. And so I want to create that atmosphere for people on the Patreon page. 